G'day and welcome back to the Project 200 video series. Today I'll be going through the complete installation of an Outback Accessories rear bar with twin spare wheel carriers onto the 200. Rear bars don't just improve protection for the rear of the vehicle, they provide an important mounting point for spare wheels, jerry cans, lighting and other accessories. Relocating the spare from under the vehicle also improves the departure angle and makes room for a long range fuel tank. Picking a good rear bar is harder than you might think. There's quite a few on the market these days, so why did I choose this one? Well mainly because it's clearly been designed with practicality in mind. It's got a great departure angle, and the location of the high lift jack holes on the side of the bar means you don't have to open a wheel carrier to use them. The carriers can be easily removed between trips without needing an engineering degree, so you don't have to lug an extra 100 kilos around town when you don't need to. They're held closed by strong catches that don't jam up with dust, and they open easily even on a slope thanks to the gas struts and each arm. And to top it all off, despite being a quality Australian made product, the Outback bar costs around $1,000 less than some of the other bars on the market. All in all, this is the only rear bar for the 200 with all the features that I wanted, so it was an easy choice. Please enjoy our step-by-step -step guide as we install the Outback Accessories rear bar with twin wheel carriers onto the 200. The first step in the installation is to remove the existing plastic bumper. Begin by removing the screws securing each rear mud flap inside the rear guards. Then the three bolts attaching each plastic splash guard underneath the bumper wings. Moving around under the rear of the bumper, you can then remove the two bolts attaching the pressed metal bracket to the chassis. The bracket will come off with the bumper. Next, with the lower tailgate open, remove the two plastic clips securing each inside edge of the plastic bumper. Close the tailgate, then remove the plastic step by levering it away from the bumper with a flat blade screwdriver. With the step out of the way, you can then unbolt the five bolts securing the top of the bumper. With all the fastenings removed, you can now unclip the wings of the bumper by gently pulling the top edge away from the vehicle beginning inside the guards, then lift the entire bumper off the vehicle. Carefully set it aside, then finish the preparation phase by removing and discarding the three pressed metal brackets from under the tailgate, the two tow hooks from under the chassis rails, and the three plastic splash guards from the bottom of the sills. Finally, check the welds on the top and bottom of the chassis rails. If they're lumpy, grind them down and touch them up with some black paint. It's now time to prepare and fit the new bumper. Begin by fitting the supplied cage nuts to the backing plate then loosely fit the hook plates to the bar. Then fit the body ends of the gas struts into the mounting bracket inside each top wing of the bar using the supplied clevis and split pins. With the aid of an assistant, you can then lift the new bumper onto the vehicle, sliding it over the chassis rails until it stops. Align the bumper horizontally using the hitch receiver as a guide, then fit and nip up four bolts into the captive nuts where the tow hooks were previously removed. Moving away from the vehicle, it's now time to prepare and cut the original plastic bumper bar. Begin by removing the two reflector assemblies from the bumper. Then apply protective tape along the wings of the bumper. Then mark a line along the wing, 270mm down from the top of the bumper at the front of the wing, and 370mm down at the rear. Continue the line around the corner of the bumper to meet the bottom of the recess where the reflectors were just removed. Remember to double check all measurements before cutting and protect the upper section of the bumper wings from damage as they will be reused. Carefully cut along the wings from the reflector recesses at the rear all the way to the front of each wing using either an angle grinder, jigsaw or air body saw. Next move to the step area of the bumper and cut along the curve where the vertical inside edge meets the step until you meet the first cut at the reflector recess. With both wing tops now cut off the bumper, you need to carefully remove the shrouds within the wings where the reflectors were removed, without damaging the outer curve. I, with extreme caution, used a sharp knife for this step, but it could also be done with a Dremel tool or die grinder. Moving back to the vehicle, test fit the plastic bumper wings, ensuring that the wing cut is parallel to the new bar. Recut the wings if required. Then test fit the mud flaps, checking for a smooth curve along the mud flap between the new bar and the guard. If required, space the new bumper back from the chassis using the large included square washers. 
Once you're happy with the alignment, remove the plastic wings and fit the supplied pinch weld over the cut bumper, both along the outside edge of the wings and inside adjacent to the step area. The new bar uses four additional bolts into the back and underside of the chassis rails. Drill the first two holes into the rear of the chassis rails, through the pre-drilled holes in the bar which are accessed through the tail light recesses. Start with the pilot hole, then expand out to 13mm diameter. Make sure you remove the swarf to prevent rust, then bolt up with the included 12 by 65 mm high tensile bolts. As with all the fasteners retaining the new bar, I'm using Loctite to ensure they don't come loose. The second set of holes must be drilled up from under the vehicle into the bottom of the chassis rails through the pre-drilled holes in the bumper. Bolt up with the supplied 12 by 35 mm high tensile bolts then you can also fully tension the four bolts previously installed into the tow hook's captive nuts. It's now time to refit the plastic bumper wings and the mud flaps. Be begin by clipping the bumper wings back into their original position, then replace the two plastic clips on each side within the tailgate recess. You can then refit the mud flaps using the original T30 screws to secure them to the body and plastic bumper and the supplied nuts and bolts to secure the mud flaps to the leading edge of the new bumper. Moving under the vehicle, you can then fit the bumper wing supports using the supplied screws to also secure the bottom of the mud flaps, then the button head bolts to secure the supports to the bumper wing and then back to the chassis mounting brackets on the bar. It's now time to prepare and fit the wheel carriers to the bar. Thoroughly grease the supplied bearings, then install the larger ones into the bottom of each carrier, followed by the seals. You can then carefully install the carriers onto the pins of the new bumper. I've protected the lip of the plastic bumper wings with some vinyl tape and the top of the pins thread with the plastic cap. You can then remove the plastic cap on the thread and install the small bearings, flat washers and nuts, tensioning them so that the bearings are slightly loaded. Then fit the split pins. No need for Loctite on these nuts. You can then tap on the dust caps and attach the gas struts to the carriers using the supplied bolts with nylock nuts. It's now time to move on to the lights and wiring for the new bumper. Fit the supplied cage nuts to the light brackets, then loosely mount the black light surrounds to the brackets using self tappers and speed clips. You can then fit the brackets to the bar, aligning the black surrounds to the hole in the bar before tightening the mounting bolts and screws. The LED lights then clip into the surrounds. Rather than using the supplied scotch locks, I've soldered all the wiring connections then insulated them with heat shrink tubing for extra reliability. The lights are wired using the supplied 5 core loom. In my case, I could tap into the existing tow bar wiring, but if you don't already have wiring in place, you'll have to connect to the vehicle's factory tail lights. At this time, I also fitted the supplied number plate light to the bracket and wired it with the supplied plug and two core loom back to the tail lights. If you're unsure about standard wiring colours, they're listed on the Project 200 website. Next, using the supplied cuphead bolts, fit the alloy step to the top of the new bumper, then loosely fit the over-centre catches to the wheel carriers. You can then close the carriers and centre the hook plates before fully tightening the bolts. With the plates firmly in position, you can adjust and tighten the catches to produce a smooth and firm over centre action on each carrier. Again, use Loctite on all bolts for extra security. It's now time to move on to the epic task of relocating the standard reversing camera. Begin by removing the plastic cover over the lower tailgate hinge by carefully levering the clips up with a screwdriver. You can then remove the door seal from the left hand side of the body. Next, carefully lever off the rear portion of the lower plastic trim from the left hand side of the load area until you can see the factory wiring grommet which goes through the floor. Moving to the upper tailgate, remove the four plastic trim pieces, starting with the upper section followed by the two sides and then the lower section. All the pieces are just clipped into place. Note that when you remove the side trims, the clips remain on the vehicle and you'll have to remove them and refit the clips to the trims before you refit the trims to the vehicle. You can then unscrew the T30 screws retaining the camera. Before you can remove it though, you'll need to squeeze the corners of the tricky plastic clips like this, but from within the tailgate. 
It's now time to use the supplied 5 core cable to extend the camera wiring. Cut a small slit in the wiring grommet located earlier. Then, leaving a 30cm tail on the wheel carrier flange, run the cable down the carrier, under the rear sill and up through the grommet into the load area. Continue pulling the cable up the inside of the D-pillar trim and across to the factory rubber wiring duct that goes into the upper tailgate. Pull the cable through the duct and into the tailgate. Taping the cable to some rigid wire and using a bit of detergent will make the job easier. You can then run the cable alongside the factory loom until you reach the camera plug at the bottom of the tailgate. Cut the plug off the factory loom, leaving at least 50mm of wire on the plug, then set the plug aside. You can then solder four of the wires onto the camera wires in the tailgate and insulate the connections with heat shrink tube. The fifth wire is a surplus. You can then solder the camera plug onto the other end of the 5 core cable out on the wheel carrier. Make sure you connect the plug with the corresponding coloured wires used in the tailgate end of the wiring. You can then fit the camera to the number plate bracket, then test it before reassembling all the tailgate and body trims. Then fit the supplied cover plate over the old camera hole. Also ensure you secure the wiring to the carrier using cable ties and seal the slit in the wiring grommet. Because of the variety of types available, there's no real provision for attaching a trailer connector to the bar. I'm using a 12 pin flat style and I found that the best option was mounting it to a small piece of angle which I attached right next to the hitch receiver. In this position the connector is well protected from damage compared to fitting it under the bar. If you used a round connector you could drill a hole adjacent to the hitch receiver and mount the connector into there. The final step in the installation of the new bar is to fit the mounting plate to the left hand carrier followed by the spare wheels and finally attaching the number plate and camera bracket onto the plate. The Outback bar looks great on the 200 and has no problem with twin 33 inch tyres on the easily removed carriers. The upswept wings and corners give a better departure angle than standard and if you do drop off a large rock shelf onto the bar, it has no problem supporting the weight of the vehicle without sustaining damage. I hope you enjoyed our installation of the Outback Accessories rear bar onto the 200. It's available nationwide from Opposite Lock, or check out Outback's website for other dealers. As always, there's plenty more information and photographs of the install on the Project 200 website. See you next time.